Hi, Kevin Ledoux, the Pragmatic Luthier. I'm back again today because I'm designing uh, a new classical guitar for a client. Uh, they wanted something a little bit different than exactly what I build. So I designed this new body for them. And I have this laid out on paper, which I'll get to in a few minutes here. Uh, but as I was doing this, I was using this Ibex fret scale to lay out the critical points on my drawing and so on. And it occurred to me, you know, a story stick could be handy for some builders, especially new builders, if you don't have one of these. I don't know if these are even available anymore or not. I've had these for 30 years probably. Um, but one thing is for sure, if you have one of these fret scales, it's only going to have so many different scale lengths printed on it. And if you need something or want something a little different, you're stuck and you don't have anything to work with. So you could make a story stick is what I'm going to show you. Uh, you could make a story stick from one of these, but it, I can understand that seems a little pointless. So a story stick is nothing but a stick with critical markings on it that show you points that you want to hit each and every time you lay it down so that you can use it to lay out your guitar or you can check certain features and so on. And this can be used on your paper layout as well as when you mark out your top and so on. You can, you can put features on with that. So to make one of these, I'm just using a slat of, this happens to be soft maple. It doesn't matter what the wood is. I recommend a light colored wood, obviously, so that you can see your marks more easily. Um, and I found, I've got one here that I've, I've completed, um, that I've, I've completed it for this classical guitar. But you know, I found that um, you, before you do any of this, you take some cyanoacrylate and you gotta put gloves on, but you rub cyanoacrylate on that and it'll be, you know, a little bit rough. You sand that down just a little bit, get it nice and smooth. And then when you write on it, the ink from your markers and pens doesn't bleed into the wood. And this thing is just nice and smooth. It almost looks professional. So it's something you could do to make it nice and slick. But back to the business at hand. Um, let's just pretend you don't have one of these things and you're not going to buy one or can't afford it. I don't know. What do you do? Where do you get the information that you would need to put on this? So in order to make one of these things, you know, you got to have measurements. You got to know where each one of these marks goes. I want to show you, this is my, what I call my guitar specs book. And it's just a notebook full of information that I use regularly. Um, everything from fret calculations to any number of stuff. And I have another notebook that has notes about guitars already made. But I got this all laid out here with all kinds of different information. And in this section, it, I have fret calculations. Now, fret calculations, I'm sure I'm preaching to the choir here. A lot of you, I'm sure, already know. There are several uh, places online where you can get measurements for frets for any scale length you want to. And you can get them um, in Imperial as well as metric. And that's a real handy tool. Boy, I remember before any of this stuff existed, if you wanted to do a custom scale length, it was kind of hard to figure out where all those frets go. And while some of you might be able to do this, I am not capable of the mathematics um, to generate all of these numbers. I cannot do that. Uh, woe is me. I should have paid much more attention in college. Um, at any rate, let's just pretend that I'm going to use this scale length. This happens to be for a 24.5. So I'm going to get my my stick here with good square ends on it, over length, and I'm just going to establish my my zero end or the nut end right here, and I'm going to turn this and kind of move it out of the way so that you can see a little better what's going on here. Hope you can see this okay. Let's see if I maybe, pardon me, pull that camera a little bit closer and get it down there. So all I need to do now 
if you'll excuse me, grabbing a ruler. Um, I recommend that for what you're doing here, and for that matter, for any work you do in instrument building, I recommend that you get yourself, um, and here's where the expense comes in, get yourself a ruler that reads um, either in millimeters, depending on what you work in, uh, you know, metric, or if you read in uh, imperial measurement, as I do, then you want a scale that will read in inches, 30 seconds and 60 fourths, but more importantly, in hundredths of an inch. And for those of us that are like us guys that don't like to convert to the metric system, um, this is kind of similar in that it's inches, but now the inch is divided into tenths and fiftieths and one hundredths and all that stuff. So it's simple. I'm going to, from the nut, I'm going to look at my chart over here and I'm going to identify the twelfth fret. And that happens to be at twelve and thirteen hundredths inches. So, of course, I'm going to come down here and I'm going to mark that. And I'm not looking closely. I'm just demonstrating here what I'm going to do. I'm also going to come down further and I'm going to mark my 12th fret position. And I'm going to mark my 14th fret position so that I'm able then to do a 12th fret and a 14th fret neck. I'm going to come further down and I'm going to mark my my E string position as well. Uh, that's going to be very important. And I'm going to mark my sound hole center position. That may or may not be handy for you. And in this case, I mark my 19th fret position because that is the, the edge of the sound hole for this particular guitar. But you could put any and all other information on this that you deem necessary. There's no uh, limit here to this at all. And you could, if you want to lay out your frets on a fingerboard by, by hand, you could put every fret position on this by reading your information and by very carefully with your hundredth scale or with your, your metric scale, you could chart every one of those positions. Now, I know that might be time consuming, but it is doable. And if you're an old fart like myself, all right, then put on your optivisor or your magnifying glass and get right in there and you can do it. It's, it's not that hard to do. Uh, just sidebar, this is a 24-inch scale. It's not going to be long enough to do everything I want. I just bought and has not arrived yet a 36-inch scale that reads in hundredths of an inch. I'll just say one ouch on the price of that. Uh, and it was a nice import model. If it was a Starrett, it would be a quadruple ouch on that. All right, so that's one way that you can do this by reading this information. Um, but there is another way, and this might look a little hokey, but uh, a prominent nationally known inlay artist demonstrated this trick. He said, literally, uh, you take a guitar that you like, that a scale length that you like, and you literally use it. So, you know, it's just that simple. So now I'm going to take my stick and a nice, you want a nice fine lead holder, of course. You all know that. I'm going to zero against the nut. And I'm going to come up here and I'm going to mark the center of my 12th fret. I'm going to mark the center of my 14th fret. And I'm going to mark the E string position. And anything else down here that I want to do. And you're going to go through the same process. So you could use another guitar to do that if you wanted to. Once you get your marks established, you're going to identify those. You'll need a good double square or a combination square, either one. You're going to come to those marks. I highly recommend a knife as opposed to just a pencil. And you're going to square across each one of those positions. And then, of course, you're going to label them. And by using a knife, you just get a good permanent mark. And you can take your lead holder after. 
and you can just trace over that and kind of fill that in that cut in with graphite and see that brightens that up nice so you can really see that and i'll bet if you had uh, a finish on this you might even be able to rub a little bit of yellow chalk in there wipe the dust off and then spray over it with a quick finish and it would be even really more slick and exotic than anything i've got here so now i guess what do you do with this and I, now i'm sure a lot of you know but I'll, I'll show you how i use it uh here's my my drawing i have traced the body outline for this guitar and i've done that around a center line that is excessively long and all i'm going to do now is take my lead holder and i'm going to put my story stick down here this is going to be a 12 fret instrument as is tradition with a classical guitar and i'm going to put that 12th fret right at the edge of the body and i'm going to mark right there where the nut is going to fall i'm going to mark down here where the sound hole center is going to be and i'm going to mark down here where the e string is going to fall that's going to help me understand my bracing where my sound hole is cut in and so on. Likewise, I have a top and I have the outline of the instrument on the top. I can take my story stick again and by lining up my 12th fret for this particular guitar or 14th or whatever your connection is, by lining that up, I can make those same marks. There's where the E string falls. There's the sound hole center. There is my 12th fret, obviously. Sound hole center, 19th fret, that's not too important. But you see now, having that information with those marks on there, now I know where to drill a center hole to start uh, cutting out a sound hole or preparing a rosette. And I know where my E string uh, and consequently my bridge saddle center is going to be and I can start laying out my bracing pattern around all of this important information. I made a video quite a while ago um, that dealt with designing a guitar body of your own using a half pattern like this and some other other things that you need to do and uh, that video may be a good companion to today's presentation. So if you have not seen that, I'll put a link to that um, somewhere on this video or in the description probably. One other thing that I just thought of that you could do is you could use a fingerboard template. Now, I did another video quite a while ago about making fingerboard templates, and you could do that same thing if you make one of these and make it purposely over length. You could put exactly the same information on it. The only difference, of course, would be you'd have to constantly work from the center line. At any rate, uh, there it is, the story stick story, so to speak. Um, I hope you found this information useful and pertinent. And I want to remind you that I am Kevin Ledoux, the Pragmatic Luthier, the largest manufacturer of guitars in the entire town of Triangle, New York. And I want to wish you happiness and great good luck in your guitar building. Thanks again for watching.